Today we're going to play test and review a Ronnie sheepskin pipe bag. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and hitting that bell icon to get notified of new videos. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. All right, everybody, right here I have a Ronnie pipe bag from Malaysia. I've heard great things about this, a sheepskin bag, and uh, today we're going to unbag one right here. So let's not waste any time and get in. Now, so here it comes. It's just in a uh, bag. So I'm going to, it's got a little pull tab, so hopefully I won't need the scissors. I don't want to do anything to injure the bag, uh, but it arrived uh, just fine. It took about uh, a week to arrive, which isn't so bad. So let's go ahead and pull this pull tab and see what we got in here. And, oh, it's got my name on it. I like that. Okay, it looks like it's wrapped up well. It's definitely tight in some plastic here. So this is going to be for my Robbies. So I've been using a McKillop goatskin bag made by a former student of mine, Mr. John McKillop. Um, I don't know if he's currently making bags or not, but uh, in any case, I wanted to give a new product a try. And while goatskin's been fantastic, I want to try a sheepskin bag. All right, so this might have been in a uh, non-box, but it is quite thoroughly wrapped, which is just fine by me. So take your time getting into this. Don't injure the bag. That's good. All right, and even after this, there is more. Now, we got a, some tape right here holding it together. All right, here we go, finally down to, to business here, and yet another layer of wrapping. So, Ronnie, great job on getting this thing packaged. At least uh, it looks that way so far. Now I'm seeing the bag. And here we go, people. Look at that. That is a lovely looking bag. Smells quite lovely. It's not uh, as barnyard as my goatskin bag was at this stage of the game. It's got uh, Ronnie's information on it right here. So, uh, yeah. Ronnie Pipe Bag Enterprise. All his information. Not an overly large neck opening. I did have him pre-cut the holes. I always just use the standard hole placement. Uh, I don't need anything fancy. He's happy to ship them out um, cut or uncut. So uh, if you want to put holes in it yourself, you're welcome to do so. But the size of the bag looks absolutely perfect. Um, I'm very excited to tie this in. Now, he did say to not wet this bag. If I do feel I need any sort of lubrication in putting these stocks through, I'm going to actually use some seasoning rather than water this time. That is because of uh, the oils and things he uses in this. He specifically said not to wet it, which I know I've said in another video. The neck opening is really quite small, which is great. I think it's gonna make the tie-in much, much easier. Oh, and here we go. Here are the bits of leather that we're going to use. I knew it had to be here that we can roll up, and there's actually three of them. There's plenty here. I might actually just cut one of these in half. But in any case, to roll up on either side of the welt while tying in the channer stock, so those are supplied as well. So we got the sheepskin bag here. We'll be tying the Robbies into these in short order. Um, that won't be today. I got two big days of lessons, so I'll probably be in some different clothes next time you see me. But uh, I'm very excited to get this started, so we'll be right back. All right, let's get started with this. As you can see, I already have the bass drum stock in the bag. Now, I tried to feed it through the neck, and I'll tell you right now, that was not going to happen. I tried actually taking a little bit of seasoning. I heated it up just enough that it was uh, liquefied a bit. I coated some of the inside of the neck, because again, Ronnie said not to wet it with water, which I'm gonna listen to him, but we are eventually gonna season it. So I thought this would be fine to use kind of as a lubricant to get it through. But again, it's a fairly narrow neck, which I think is gonna make the tie-in process a little bit easier. 
So what I did instead is I coated the bass drum stock with some seasoning, just by hand, put some on there, and then I went, so ferrule first into the bag. I had coated this whole thing with some seasoning, not too much. It's on there right now, you can't really see it. So I didn't go crazy and it'll wipe off just fine. Seasoning's not gonna hurt anything. And I was able to get it into the bag without tearing anything right here. So you can see, I have the bass drone ready to start tying in. In fact, it needs to come out just a little bit more. I have a whole other series on the specifics of tying in, so much of this is probably gonna be fast forwarded through. Now I want a certain amount of the bag above the stocks. You get too much of the leather up above where it ties in, you're really gonna pinch down the bag at that middle point. But if you don't have enough leather above where we're tying in, then you can run into other problems. So this skin being nice and quite thick, it's actually just a little challenging to figure out exactly where I want this. Now this did not come in with tie-in string. I have plenty left from a previous Lee and Sons tie-in right here. So we're gonna use the cord that came with that, but uh, artificial sinew works. There's all sorts of different cords that work. All right, so I finally got the bass drone tied in. The thick skin of this sheepskin is proving to be somewhat challenging to tie in, I'm not gonna lie. Um, what I found I needed to do was actually use, of all things, a hose clamp um, to hold it in place while I then get the string, or the tie-in cord, moreover, into the groove. It is tied in and it is currently being seasoned right now. So this is actually the second seasoning. Uh, I put half of a jar tin container of uh, Hardy's Airtight. Here we go. And I got uh, most of the rest of the other half in right now. So that was about two days ago and it was pretty darn airtight after the first half. I know a lot of folks put a full container of seasoning in the first time they season. I just find it to be a waste. I, I never reuse seasoning once it comes out of this. It gets thrown away and more than half of the overall seasoning, um, every time I do it, kind of comes out anyways. So if I put a full tin in there, well, it just means that, well, I've lost half a tin that didn't seem to be doing anything. So this right now seems to be mostly absorbed. I'm not hearing it move around. Go, gonna go ahead and vent. Now this, Skin on this bag is amazingly thick. It is um, by far the thickest uh, sheepskin I have ever felt. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with sheepskin. Uh, I've had a few Lee and Sons sheepskin bags come through and they were fantastic bags. I have a review actually of a grommeted one up here that uh, that student is still very much enjoying. I have a couple older, largely unnamed sheepskin bags that uh, for the most part I was able to rejuvenate with some seasoning because they hadn't been played much even if they were a bit older. But this one almost seems to have a spine. <laughs> the backbone almost seems to remain. So the tying in process took whew, a long time. I filmed some of it and uh, yeah, I don't think that'll be seeing the light of day because at the end of it, it took a long time. It was uh, quite difficult to tie in, but as you can see, I got it fully tied in. It's going great. It's clearly airtight. Now, being a hide bag, I have stuck this on the ground and kneeled on it. I do think that's a great idea for um, hide bags to make sure you're getting all the seasoning in the seams. Again, for testing a synthetic bag, I do not think that is needed or even appropriate. But for a hide bag, I do. As you see, I can't get anything more into it right now. So we're going to hang this up, let it dry. And as a reminder to folks, in case you haven't seen my seasoning video, I like to put paper towels down. Can we get light? I like to put paper towels down. The three drone stocks, at the very least, it goes a long way to helping. Well, keep the seasoning from getting all up inside the stocks and getting them all junky, and you have to wipe them out. This way, they're good to go as soon as you're done. So, a little bit of update mid process of getting this up and playing. I wanted you to see it. Um, you can see it's a good shape. It's a good size. I've played on it a little bit already. It was going well. I want to give it quite a bit more playing though because like any skin bag, goat skin or sheep skin, I tend to feel they need a good three, four solid hours of playing for it to start really wrapping around you before you can get a good solid opinion. If you do get a bag, be it one of these Ronnie pipe bags, a Lee and Sons pipe bag, a Beg pipe bag, a Bennett pipe bag, a Murray pipe bag, there's a lot of guys making some great bags out there. 
You tie in, you put it under your arm, and it feels a little awkward at first. Don't freak out immediately. I have not felt any of these that are like, oh man, that feels great in that first moment. They can sound great. The tone already has that kind of sheepskin steadiness and all of that stuff. And there'll be a recording, just stay tuned, of these getting played with the whole thing set up. But that being said, for every one of those bags, I always find they take a good couple of hours of playing to really kind of morph to your body. I think it's kind of probably you getting used to the bag and the bag morphing to you. It's probably some sort of melding of the two because every one of these things, this came from a real animal. So every one of these things is a little different. Even if you use the exact same template, the way the leather is going to kind of stretch and move and all of that stuff is going to change. So there you go. We'll be back in a bit with a full play test on this and some more thoughts. The bag is quite comfortable. It has a very structured neck, and yet the channer um, fits quite lovely into the hands. I don't have to pull it back too far at all. So it's out just a little bit. But to be honest, I don't mind having a little bit of almost like some tension against the fingers from the channer wanting to live a little bit further out. But it's certainly not living like straight out like a few bags I've had in the past that had no sort of swan neck. Nice thick leather right here. So again, it's very structured in through the whole neck going down into the channer. And you can see while I was playing, it's a very comfortable shape. It's a very good shape. It's got uh, a really nice just feel to it. I mean, the sheepskin doesn't take but a few minutes to already start molding to my body. I'm excited to play this for a few more hours and see um, how it continues to develop against me as I play. But the resonance that I get, the ease of strike in, the ease of cutoff, it's all the legendary sheepskin stuff. And today, again, these are my Robbies by McGilvray and Dunbar, and I'm playing them with a Shepherd Blackwood Channer and a Shepherd Reed. So a few things to note in buying these, since these are coming from Malaysia, shipping can sometimes be a little difficult, especially in the middle of the uh, contagion that we're all going through right now. Um, but it did get to me kind of quickly, but the price of shipping was a little bit higher than was originally advertised. I was happy to cover the difference, but be aware the cost of shipping might be more than you would expect from say a North American or Scottish or English bag maker because it's coming from another part of the world. That being said, at least as of the filming of this video, the Ronnie Pipe Bag's cost, the price to buy one of these is low enough that even with maybe a bit more on shipping, I still saved a ton of money buying this bag. So upon initial play testing, I absolutely recommend it with the only caveat being I do need to give it some time. I'm going to come back in another three or six months, something like that, with a follow-up short review on my thoughts as I continue to play this. I'm gonna do my best to put a few minutes on it a day, if not more, um, every day. Being sheepskin, it's definitely a little firmer than the goatskin I have on my Hendersons over there. I can feel a bit of a difference in just the feel of the bag even right now, though again, this isn't broken in at all yet. It's just been tied in. It probably has, oh, about an 45 minutes of play time, probably not even an hour yet. And yet I'm already feeling it kind of morphed to my body as I said earlier. Well, it looks like there might be another sheepskin convert right here, especially if this thick hide ends up holding up long-term, which I hope it does. It was seasoned with Hardy's Airtight, 
Ronnie actually recommends the Robertson seasoning. He finds it works maybe just a little bit better than the Airtight. That being said, in North America, I couldn't actually find a distributor of the Robertson seasoning, so I used the Airtight. I had no issues whatsoever. Again, it took three seasonings to get this fully airtight. It was nearly there after the second one, but after the third one, this thing was tight as a drum. It was doing great, and it's very comfortable to play now. So when it's ready, there'll be a card up here taking you to the follow-up review here in a few months. But as of right now, I'm just gonna put a little bit more time in on the bag here uh, on these pipes and start enjoying my Robbies again because they had not been getting enough love because the goat skin on the Hendersons there had kind of taken, well, all of my attention and I just had a, a synth bag on this one. And uh, yeah, kind of once you go this way, man, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard to go back. So there you go, everybody. I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, please think about giving it a like and subscribing to the channel and sharing with any other pipers that you think might need a sheepskin upgrade. If you want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a long way to help support the channel. You'll see names scrolling up right now. These are some of the fine folks that contribute monthly to the channel here. I thank you all so much and I'd love to add your name to this list. If you want a more personalized instruction, I do give Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see there and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet. I hope to work with you soon. I also have a Command Your Bagpipe line of merchandise just because, I don't know, I wanted there to be some more bagpipe stuff out there. So we got mugs and shirts and hats and all sorts of stuff. Check it out. Link to the store below. All right, everybody. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.